Welcome back to the charismatic voice. Beside me, you see the wonderful Julia Nylon, who is going to introduce me today to one of her favorite musical groups, Dirty Loops. Julia, why Dirty Loops? Well, they're brilliant. To sum it up, they're brilliant. They're just top quality arranging, playing, singing. I, I just did all of them. Well, I have been saving this first time listening for this moment, so let's get to it. Yes. Wow, uh, you've got amazing, <laughs> amazing runs. Mm -hmm. I feel like Agility there's like the a little Michael Jackson in there. Really? Yes, yes, yes. That's a comparison that happens all the time. As it sounds like there's lots of influence from from Michael Jackson, but like Michael Jackson with Mariah Carey runs. Yeah, M Mariah and maybe a little bit of like a Whitney run. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of. Uh, I think people generally refer to Dirty Loops as a jazz fusion group because they're pretty, they draw from a lot of different <laughs> uh, inspirations. Mm -hmm. So there's jazz, there's some electronic in there, there's funk, soul, like there's <laughs> lots of different influences in there. Uh, so I really personally love their arrangings because I love those styles yeah. so, so much. I'm going to go back to the beginning. I want to yeah. hear that one more time. That's a <laughs> yeah, great vocal entrance. <laughs> yeah. It's like so clean. It it's is so clean. So clean. And he sounds like that live too. Yeah? Have you yeah. heard him live? I've heard recordings of him playing live. So I know there's a difference between, hey, this is a live performance and then they can edit in post. And then, uh -huh. hey, here's a camera of me at a concert. Yes, totally. Recording this person live. So yeah, he's clean. Wow. wow. Clean. What do you think about the way he has his teeth presented in a lot of this? So I feel like this position of like the square and the teeth. Uh-huh. That is generally something you will find when people are up as high as he is. Yeah. So he is exercising a lot of power. I would say he's in a belt mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yeah. for, for most of that intro. So that's why the agility is also really impressive because usually when you have more power, you can kind of lose control of, mm -hmm. of the agility side of things. It's a lot easier to go fast with a softer setup than it is with a uh, louder, heavier setup, at least in the beginning. Um, so that also lets us know that he's been doing this for a really long time. And his yeah. instrument is just really well set up for these kinds of sounds. And he's got a very slender belt, which yes. we know is also really healthy. Yes, yes. It's really, it's really flexible. It doesn't mm -hmm. sound like he's having to work too hard. And part of that will be that mouth shape. Mm -hmm. So because he's up so high and he's got this square happening here, this exposure of the teeth um. tends to happen a lot in very high mixed belting. And it's almost cool. like you're trying to get this like through here. A little more focus right yeah. in here, essentially like targeting yes. your residents to yeah, be yeah, here. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 That's cool. That's so really cool. Okay, one more time. Open. <laughs> one oh, sorry, more time. mouth is it's open. It's so cool. No, 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 I can say it one more time. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Trying to read the signs Trying to move on your move 
super Michael Jackson. It's super Michael Jackson. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's so much, like, funkiness oh. with it at the same time. <laughs> yeah. That's why we say, like, jazz fusion. Uh-huh. All these different styles. Because they're not... There's definitely those pop MJ influences in there, but the groove, like, they just groove so hard. And yeah. all of those influences are generally from that, like, funk <laughs> kind of background. Funk is, is groovy. I <laughs> adore what the drummer is doing. Yeah, what is it about the drummer um, that you love? The fact that he's got these little fast moments that are peeking out through the layers mm -hmm. and it leads you up. I find that it leads really well into points of tension in the arrangement. Because they just like <laughs> peek out, it's like, tsk, tsk, tsk. I don't know how to do it. I can't, I can't little, do it. Little fills that drummer. make it like, essentially yes. like connect yes. pieces together. And it's like the perfect setup into the space of the next section, or it's a perfect setup into tension in the next section. Mm -hmm. So I really like their musicianship. Their musicianship is just top notch. Okay, so who is who are these people? You wanna okay. give us a breakdown? Yeah, okay. Oh, well I keep um, getting, I keep clicking on guitar player. Yeah, so um, this is their bassist, oh, Henrik. Bass, sorry, yeah. Uh, an ongoing joke in the Dirty Leaps community is every time they make a new video, he's got more amps behind him. <laughs> <laughs> every single time he's got another amp, um, which I just think is really cool. And yes, he has had that hair the entire time. So I was first exposed to Dirty Loops uh, in... 2011 when their cover of Baby by Justin Bieber came out. Yeah, I know, Baby Justin Bieber doesn't exactly sound like uh, like something that someone who's like studying jazz is, <laughs> would enjoy. But if you haven't checked out that cover, it is amazing. I adore that cover. Henrik has an amazing solo in it. In fact, mm. he's got amazing solos in so many things. He's an astounding bass player. Um, yeah, so we've got right, so Henrik. Henrik. Oh, and Blurry. Oh, there we go. That's a better picture. <laughs> and then we've got Jonah on the vocals and the keys. And let's see if we can get... Oh, there. Yeah. Ooh, that's a better picture. Yeah. And our drummer, we have Aaron. So I've seen videos where Aaron and Henrik are putting their own vocals into the performance. Uh -huh. Here we can see yeah. um, them providing some backing vocals here. Essentially but, in parallel octaves down below. It yeah. Like. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So um, I find that they tend to do more of that backing, like feeling supporting vocal. Yeah. All, all the main vocals come from Jonah, generally, or at least from what I've listened to from them. All right. We're going to start right... Ah! <laughs> and he finishes that phrase too. I see. Him. It's like energy all the way to the end. Yeah, all the way to the end. No tension. Friday night, am I out of line? Am I working it down? Trying to move, on your move, on ya. Now try to smooth, on ya. Make me rise, get the crazy eyes as I try to read the signs. Trying to move, on ya, move, on ya. Now try to smooth. There we are. Okay, what <laughs> makes it... <laughs> I was like, I think that's... You can tell the phrase is about to end there and go to something else. So yeah. I, I didn't let it go into the other yeah. thing and it's driving Julia crazy. <laughs> She's like, oh no, but the tension went there. Um, <laughs> I was trying to think about what is it that makes it sound like MJ? Like, mm. I think it's a lot of the... Um, I think it's a lot of the aspiration or the little bits between that like move... <laughs> He does yes. that kind of thing between yeah. where it's essentially a vocalized aspiration or yeah. like a little glottal attack yeah, yeah. that he adds. Absolutely. <laughs> a um, little puff of air. I do think that constriction is very deliberate in, mm -hmm. in Jonah's delivery so that he can yeah. have that style there. So you might notice that there seems to be tension in between some of the words as well mm -hmm. so that he really hits the percussive element. So he's grooving too oh, yeah. vocally. So you have these like little... <laughs> moments where it's it's literally like aspirated percussion yeah yeah so you exactly. can add that into the phrasing and the way he's delivering his consonants is extremely extremely mm. rhythmic uh one of the things that drives me crazy yeah. about some vocalists is when they say oh i'm keeping good rhythm but really they aren't using their consonants to help mm. establish that groove and yeah. jonah is doing the opposite yeah no yeah. he's hitting um or emphasizing certain uh parts of his phrase so that we really feel that groove in yeah. his phrase as well which is just really it's a very musical way of it's approaching awesome. your singing because you hear it and you like the melody doesn't seem to be moving quite as much in the verse I mean mm -hmm. he's moving all over the place in his intro because <laughs> oh my god the intro is amazing he's totally free uh -huh. <laughs> totally free he can do whatever he wants um but in the verses it's really sort of sitting around the same zone until yeah. they bring in the other vocal layers yep. and stuff but 
it's those other musical elements like the aspirated percussion, like how he is emphasizing different parts of his phrase so he can sit in the groove just as much as the instrumentalists are. And the fact that he's doing all this while playing the piano is really cool. Uh, really, really cool. Really, really, really cool. Really, really cool. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a, a lot of multitasking. Yeah, it is multitasking. Oh, <laughs> uh, he's got a great face. I yeah. like his faces. <laughs> <laughs> It's car music like Michael Jackson too. I like the, the layers up above, yeah. right? We've got some really beautiful harmonizations he's added on top. And I I really think that these particular chords feel very funky to me. Yeah, I would, I would agree. I also really like how in that layering, they have something that is mimicking some of that aspirated percussion that he's doing. So mm -hmm. we have this like... Tick -tick 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 oh yeah, I noticed that. It's like, it almost seemed like it would attach so the kick cool. pedal, but... It it's it's like, really what? cool. How are they making that sound? <laughs> <laughs> and it, it just, to me, that mimics a lot of the ideas yeah. that he'd already established in the verse like, with that doing some aspirated records, percussive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> I like it. We should do lots of beatboxing, obviously. <laughs> okay, here we go again. I love that transition. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what we were talking about with yeah. the fast fill. And yeah. then I love the way they drop the sound right before coming back in, clears your ears, yes. lets you appreciate the yes. next bit. So sometimes I think one of the most underestimated elements of arranging is what you can do with space. It doesn't necessarily have to be a massive amount of space mm -hmm. in order to create that sense of momentum, that sense of anticipation in the yeah. person who's listening to the music. So that was a really, really clever way yeah. of utilizing just a tiny bit of space so that we feel like, yes, okay, here we're going. And we're going into this. They drove us into the space yeah. too with mm -hmm. the film. That mm -hmm. was really cool. <laughs> a little cry essentially yeah. into that run yeah. where he's kind of playing with a higher register and, and like blocking into or shifting mm -hmm. into the lower one mm -hmm. with this cry and then just a little run off of it. Mm -hmm. There's a couple technical things happening there in a little tiny moment that really show that he's got his technique engraved. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. I love the fact that... Oh. Okay, what do you love? Okay. I'm glad you played it. Um, uh -huh. I love the fact that in that moment, the phrasing has a little bit more suspense to it as well. Ooh, so uh -huh. he's changed his phrasing just a little bit. The melody isn't quite where we've been before, but also the phrasing hasn't been exactly where we've been before either. Earlier, his phrasing has been really exact and kind of been like locking into the groove. Mm -hmm. That one he suspended and then thread into the run. I like that too. Yeah. yeah I, yeah. I enjoy that. Let's go back a little more. I appreciate that. <laughs> That run is so cool. The dynamics too. No, uh -huh. it's like it's like kind of like going like in and out, but like still singing yeah. the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> How 
could you even like begin to practice that? Like go like 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 I would put yeah. my mouth shape a bunch first and then try and put pitches to it. Yeah. Um. I think in this instance. <laughs> It feels like a sound that's very localized to kind of this area, if I was to talk about places. Yeah. It, very much here. It's like a little M in it to me. Yeah. Which is yeah. A, a nasal consonant, so it's going to be mm-hmm. coming more through your nose. So um, when we're talking about nasalized consonants, there are just some sounds that immediately they relax the soft palate and the sound propagates through the nose. So without mm, it's coming mm. through the nose. You mm. also get it with mm and oh. Mm. So sometimes if you're practicing something like this, which is leaning more nasalized, but the mm mm-hmm. isn't working, you can try those other nasalized consonants because often people can't tell. Yeah, I think an in, NG actually yeah. is the most, the most close. Yeah, yeah. So you can use any kind of nasalized consonant, but something that he's doing here is making sure that <laughs> his breath flow isn't getting locked up. So even though he is breathing out of his nose, he's still got a little bit propagating through his mouth. Oh, yes, totally, yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, got, it's got both. Yeah, it's got both in there, but it is a very, I would say it is more on the closed sound. And the risk with that is sometimes you might close too much. And then he doesn't have any of the freedom that he needs in order to get through this amazing phrase where he's playing with the dynamics. And part of playing with the dynamics is his placement. It's like he's starting here, backing off a little bit. And then there's like a swell into Mm -hmm. the rest of the dynamic as he's going through that. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that was a great example of a little extra sound there. Oh, it's action. I. Yeah. He does yeah. an extra aspiration. Yes. I. Yep. And does a puff at the end. Just one, two. And there's a. I'm like, how yeah. do I make that sound with, with my mouth? Anyhow. It's, I haven't done any beatboxing training. I was just trying. I I write, we should <laughs> make weird noises, guys. That's how you figure it's things fun. out. It's fun. Just one, two. like the production on this section i feel like it's like bouncing the vocals around in a lot of different really cool areas um obviously like your main should usually be very center Mm -hmm. but we've got times when it feels like they're coming from those sides and it feels like they're a little more spaced behind the lead Mm -hmm. there's a lot of different things that they've done to play with the vocals and the vocal layerings so that we're never taking away from the lead and we get this sense of like tons of different voices around us yes the The other thing that really fills out that section are the horns (laughs) I love their arrangements. Those horns, just they fill in other harmonic information that I hadn't considered Mm -hmm. in the earlier sections of the song. So to me, it adds to the harmonic spectrum of what I'm listening to. Maybe harmonic spectrum is the wrong word because that sounds like a The frequency spectrum. I mean like harmonics as in if you're playing a chord and you were like extending on it, you can reharmonize chords. And this to me gives me a potential new idea on what I should be feeling in that section because of how they've chosen to arrange those horns. So, I love it. So I really I like it. I love that. the way you describe things. <laughs> the science nerdy side is so yeah. like fulfilling to my heart. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to go back to that section and listen to the horns again because yeah. I was really paying attention to the way the, the vocals were popping around that caught my caught my yeah. inner eye. It is really cool. Um, I'm not 100% sure if they do the production themselves or if they're working specifically with another group, but they always include credits at the end of their video. Oh, amazing. So we'll be able to see who else was involved. Usually Perfect. there are more people involved in their projects, but I'm not 100% sure of who it is just yet. Cool. <laughs> You're right. That's really cool. That's so cool. I love it. I love it. Very delightful. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Very jazz. that. 
it's so beautiful, but it's like very dissonant. It, how, yeah. Is that a, a thirteenth at least that's happening in the chord? Honestly, I couldn't tell you. But to me, it's back to that reharmonization concept where uh -huh. you're given a chord that should theoretically be fitting within the, um, I guess, the chords that everyone is playing, uh -huh. all the notes that you should be hearing, and it gives you something new. So we're adding yeah. to our musical story, if you will. So I personally love I that really, change. Yeah, it's, it's gorgeous. Delightful. Uh -huh. And again, they're using a sense of suspension in order to lock us into that groove by the time they come back in. Yep. This is a very busy song. It's with, very busy. And without those elements creating tension and release, you'd probably find you'd get over it. You'd get tired. You'd get tired. Yeah, There's a lot going on. But you might not know that you've gotten tired, but you essentially would be overstimulated in your ears. Yeah. And you'd have too much. You wouldn't appreciate yeah. it as much. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool fills himself with moisture. And that's, he yeah. really is close to an in shape there. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's like, this, uh, uh -huh. spot there. So, a lot of the time for contemporary, we will pop our sounds there. Particularly if we're doing Oops, something that's fast, you want a consistency in, uh, I guess, your resonance, unless you're mm -hmm. deliberately making color changes. So, yeah. for uh, Jonah, one of the things that I find absolutely incredible about him is his tonal consistency when he is singing and he varies his vocal storytelling with different dynamics, different rhythms. Like he's very musical with how he chooses to modify his sound because tonally he's not doing like crazy different tones throughout his singing. It's mm -hmm. very bright. It's very forward. Um, he's belting a lot. It's very pingy and, and to the front. It's not modifying too uh -huh. differently from that. Marilyn Horan liked to go, yeah, sometimes prayer. in master classes, which is hilarious to yeah. opera singer, but yeah, yeah, so not all that different now ah, to the front. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, no, he is a brilliant example of just like tonal consistency and efficiency of nation. Just all right, let's <sighs> let's uh, listen to that moment. <laughs> So in that moment, you probably, if we listen back to that little run again, he got the differences in his sound from pulling his lips to the side and uh -huh. then bringing it forward. So he's actually changing mm. the vowel approach of it mm -hmm. um, as opposed to necessarily opening his mouth and trying to create um, differences that way. So it's subtle, but it actually does make a difference. Yeah, it feels like he's not really changing his tongue shape much, yeah. but really going for the lip shape. Yeah, so the lip shape, highly influential with his mm -hmm. like colors too. Yes. yes, exactly. One more time. Uh. Yeah. So Michael. He's really good at using space there yeah. like you could have blazed through you could have and made this uh enormous tons of notes and instead he was like eh, i'm gonna make it like mischievous mm. essentially mm. <laughs> it's like i'm yeah. gonna be sneaky with this i even has like a little shoulder sneaky that's happening <laughs> and that's the space usage you were yes. talking about so space used effectively in order to keep engagement and maintain that storytelling musically i like it just so good. And they could okay. blaze through it if they wanted to. Mm -hmm, they they could. have they have the chops. We've As musicians, they're incredible. Mm -hmm. Like <laughs> Look at his smile. They've got good chemistry. such a great breakdown okay so we start with bass and then they, they bring in a few vocals here and then 
they actually drop the bass out at one point with just the vocals, and then there's a crazy awesome bass fill. Mm -hmm. And that's a suspension that you were talking about too, yes. which I'm really good at. We have this sense of time being suspended as well. Even though mm -hmm. they're playing fast, we are anticipating mm -hmm. the drop now because they're lifting us up. They added a few playing. extra measures, like got yeah. out of like a normal sort of square phrasing. They've created an anticipation for some normal phrasing yeah. and then they broke it right here. Yeah. And cool. Henrik and um, Aaron in particular, they studied jazz. I believe. And all of them um, were in Stockholm, right? Yes. Uh, the Royal School of Music? I'm th I think so. You know, so. that sounds right. Yeah. Royal School of Music? Possibly. Possibly. All right. <laughs> Don't quote me on that. They definitely studied together. That I do know. That's pretty cool. <laughs> it is really cool. Let's catch that. Oh, I, I really, like, I'm listening to those horns way the more horns now, now. Because the way the horns just entered there, it it was so awesome. It was like this moment of, we're going to refresh the song by bringing in horns and, it, again, a different sort of, like, counter melody that's happening. Mm -hmm. I also like the way that they are more long when you have so many shorter things that are happening, even the vocal yeah. phrasing, the uh, even with the basic like, things tend to be a little more plucky versus really extended. Yes. So having this very long extended horn line is a nice contrast. Yeah, I would I would 100% like double down on that. That's, yeah, it sounds so cool when it comes in there. <laughs> that little extra bass line that happens in there too. Like there's so many little like backing vocal lines that are like bubble 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 They're like vocal bubbles floating all directions. I love the way that vocal line comes in. Okay, and we're done there. A, um, like a raised note in there. It's a half step higher to turn it in towards like a very interesting note within that run. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. Change the tonality a bit. That was such a cool <laughs> harmonic progression. <laughs> They're like, mm -hmm. <laughs> they suspend you even at the end. Yeah. That, so that chord, that final <laughs> chord was not your home zone chord. That was like, we're going to yeah. gonna leave you wanting is what that <laughs> chord did. <laughs> we're going to give you a really cool yeah. harmonic rise you expect that we're yeah. going to bring it home at the end. But instead we're like, <laughs> <laughs> 
It's like the chord version of going, psych. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it does. That's exactly what it does. Like, oh yeah, tell me more. <gasps> really? I'm on the edge, I'm on the edge. <sighs> yeah, I'm gonna hold out a nice, a happy chord. Psych. Wait, down, not up. <laughs> <laughs> amazing. That was amazing. I really enjoyed so many aspects of mm -hmm. it, but I think my absolute favorite thing was the way he played with his runs and his lip shape. Yeah, yeah. So I am just always fascinated about how he's able to relax in moments, but there's so much going on with his lips because often we talk about over-engaging is, like, mm -hmm. is like too much mm -hmm. and it can cause tension in your sound. And his sound is just... It's so fluid. It's super free. It's so free. And mm -hmm. I find that gorgeous. The arranging just always hits it for me. It's super good. Oh, it's super musician good. <sighs> right? And I love the way <gasps> you explain things. And if you guys want to see some more videos of Julia explaining things, here's a playlist over here of some of my favorite videos that Julia has done. I hope you all enjoyed this. And may you fall more in love with music every day. This is some of my favorite credits. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> that was super awesome. Yeah. Did you like them? Not at all. Not at all. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. No, they were amazing. <laughs> Let's try that one more time. I was just like, I felt off. Definitely put that in a like a blue girl. Right, right, right. Okay. <laughs>